Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Eric Johansson, that is Matt Dumont, and we're both team members at LSATdemon.com. Matt, you are a team member for not too much longer. You are unfortunately leaving us for the lofty world of judicial clerkship, right? I, I, I am. I, uh, this might be the last ones. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving for my clerkship, which I'm super excited about. I'm going to be uh, a judicial term clerk for a year on the Supreme Court of Maryland. Very excited. Um, uh, I start next week. So we'll see. Amazing. by the time you hear this, I'll be clerking, I think. I think yeah. that's how that works. Wow. Well, on behalf of all of the, the rest of the team, and I'm sure all the students at the team and a huge thank you. Um, you have been such an instrumental part of so many of our LSAT learning <laughs> processes, in particular with the logic games, um, especially as you have uploaded more videos. Um, I think you, at least for me, were a big part of my feeling just comfortable embracing a full on worlds approach to the games, which unlocked games mastery for myself. Um, so it was seeing you and, and getting sort of your permission to take worlds further, which really helped push me over the top. And I'm sure that's true for countless LSAT demon students. Best job I've ever had. So teaching people to, to love the logic games. Hey, I'm here for it. Well, since you are our LSAT uh, logic games guru and we have limited time <laughs> left, a question that we get a ton as teachers and sent into the pod and on the ask button has to do with how we review logic games. And I love sure. that students ask this question because it is probably overlooked by too many students. We put a lot of emphasis into that first time we attempt a game and sure. how it is that we figure out where to make worlds and how far to take worlds, et cetera. But I think those students who are really on the track towards improvement are focusing on, on not just how do I do this the first time, but how do I then review logic games how do i use my review time to get better so totally i'll just toss that open-ended question to you how do we review logic games sure i think uh and, and it's it is it's such a great question and it is one that gets asked uh over the my i mean gosh i've been teaching for the demon for three and a half years or something now and i would say at least once a week I feel like that question comes in um, uh, either during class or after class and have that kind of discussion. It's so important and it's so relevant. And, and uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with this. The big thing is, you know, from a general perspective, blind review, right? What is blind review? Well, let's dispel sort of like what that is um, right off the bat. Blind review is if you missed something, you go back and reattempt it without knowing what the correct answer is. And you, that doesn't mean you should reattempt every question. That doesn't mean you should really go after the questions that you, for instance, like didn't even attempt. Like if you didn't get to the fourth game, you're not like blind reviewing the fourth game. You're just attempting it for the first you're time. Just, you're just doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You're just doing it. But like those questions that you gave it your honest try in the moment and you missed it, there is such a diamond to be made out of that lump of coal, right? Like we have the opportunity to learn in that moment because, you know, when you get something correct, for the most part, it's like, oh yes, validation. You know that, you understand that. The stuff where we get something wrong is like, we missed something. We misread the question. We misread the answers. We misread the, the argument or the passage or the game setup in the first place. And so there's something broader there that we can learn from. And I really want people to lean into, in the first instance, first aspect of all of this, the questions that you got wrong are not a slap on the wrist. It is a gift of future understanding. The LSAT is giving you the opportunity and pointing out with a giant neon sign, hey, here's an opportunity to learn. Blind review is the key to that. You're reattempting it to try to figure it out on your own taking all the time in the world that you need to reattempt that question, that game, whatever it is, without turning to an explanation, without turning to the answer key, so that you can figure out and build that bridge and potentially make that connection so that next time you're not tripped up by that tricky language because you've actually learned it. You won't get tripped up by, you know, mis- reading that rule because you read it too fast because now you go oh man i completely understand it it was just a simple mistake i read it too fast 
I didn't see neither. I saw either or whatever it is. Like you saw something simple that just slowing down will solve it. So the first step is blind review. If you miss something that you attempted, you must, must, must blind review it. Right. Does and and just to interject, does that mean redoing your worlds in some cases? Potentially, yeah. I think like if you miss one question on a logic game and you very quickly go, oh, it was an accept question. Yeah, I just didn't see that big bold accept in the question. Yeah, yet. like like which okay, slow down. Sure. Let's start there. Like slow down. Let's not miss questions that were very easily gettable and you were rushing the clock and all that kind of stuff. Let the clock go. But if you missed something that was really like just straightforward and it takes you two seconds to figure out, oh, man, it was an accept question or I misread answer A. I thought it said what answer C says. First off, that's a reason why you should be selecting the right answer and getting rid of the four wrong ones. So that you don't end up with two correct answers in your brain and then you go, OK, that's a first off a backstop, you know, get rid of the four wrong answers. Yeah. But if it's something all the, so just just to clarify, check all of the answers, even if a looks like it's correct. Yeah, absolutely. Because how long does it take you? Five seconds to get rid of B, C, D and E, maybe. And then, you know, you got it right for certain logic games are the only place you can really certainly do that on the entire section. And it's so valuable and it doesn't take time it's getting paid for your work you know you got the right so if it's something really easy maybe you don't need to redo your worlds your worlds were fine you just misread the question or you misread an answer great fix that slow down don't do that in the future alternatively if you missed more than one question especially or even if you did only miss one question but there is something more going on like, wait a second, this answer doesn't make sense in my worlds. This question doesn't make sense in my worlds. These questions, multiple, are, I had problems with multiple things. Yeah, then, I have could be true questions where like three of the answers could be true. Totally not possible, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that is not how the logic games work. So in that instance, I think you should go back to square one. I think you should take another crack at the game setup um, uh, and really give it a different, honest go. Like, see what you missed fundamentally in that game in the first place. Figure that out. Try it again. See if you can get to the correct answers and, and then sort of like submit it in your brain and check in, see if you got it right on the second round. Because then you're teaching yourself, hey, this wasn't difficult. I just missed something fundamental. How do I prevent myself from doing that in the future? Yeah, I think that's that's spot on. Um, not being afraid to redo worlds if that's what's necessary to get the questions right is totally. is really crucial. Okay, follow up question. I struggled building worlds, and I sure. still in my review, I'm just really not sure of how to build worlds for this game. I just the sure. <laughs> the setup for this eludes me. What then? Yeah, so. I think this goes hand in hand with like another thing that kind of lurks out there. What if you didn't struggle? Like you got it right, mm -hmm. but you're like, could I have done it better? Mm -hmm. I think that's like the other side of the same coin of what I'm about to, to say is that is just try something. OK, I struggled with my worlds or I felt like I could have done it better. Try something. You have to be willing to dive into the deep end and not know whether you're going to drown or not. Like you like you have to try to swim. You have to dive in and try something and you might make the realization, you know, oh, I didn't see how rule three was the right thing. I didn't see how variable X was the right thing until I tried it and it started dominoing things. That's how you explore. And so you have to be willing to crash and burn in order to get better at this in the first place. So if you struggled in the first place, OK, I get that. Try something. I don't care what it is. Pick something with meaning that's going to lead you down any kind of path. You'll get better at it as you get more experience. On the flip side of that, if you did it OK, but you were like, hmm, maybe I could have done it better. Go back and try the worlds from a different rule, from a different variable. You're exploring the alternatives there and you're going, well, the first way I did it was pretty good. The second way I did it was even better. Oh, wait, weird. What's the difference there? 
you can explore that and make discoveries. Yeah, why was why was the second way better? Really yeah. think about that. Like, what what is it? Can I see now why I, I might have spotted from the very beginning why this that alternate route? Yeah, would have been a cleaner way of building worlds. Yeah, rule one triggered two rules. Rule five triggered all the rules, and you don't mm -hmm. make that realization until you try rule five, for instance. Now, I think there's diminishing returns here. I wouldn't suggest like, oh, go and do it 10 different ways. Explore a little bit, explore one alternative and see whether it confirms that you were doing it pretty well in the first place or that um, this new way is exciting and maybe a little bit better or different and why that kind of stuff. Now, if you really struggle with it, I think there's a great alternative because we have such good videos in the demon that you can start listening to a video from, uh, uh, start listening and watching, working along with us from Ben, from Nate, from me, um, uh, from any of the class videos, from people like Eric, from Marissa, um, uh, uh, from Chris, you know, all, Beth, everyone teaches in a variety of different perspectives. You can start watching a video and listening to us discuss the different plates of attack and then see where the first move we actually go is. We are talking about the merits of rule one. We're talking about the merits of rule four. And we decide mm, it seems like rule four might be the stronger one here. And you hear all that conversation. Hit pause. Start building your worlds based off of that sort of booster step that we just gave you and see where it takes you. See if you can get to the end result that makes sense to you and answers the questions on your own. Then come back and listen to the video in some more and see if we did things, see if you fell into pit hole, pitfalls, see if you avoided them, that kind of thing. It's a little bit of like a booster seat towards, hey, I really feel lost here, but it's yeah. not just trying to learn by osmosis. It's you taking the reins and going out there and trying to, to ride the horse. Yeah, for sure. Um, that is a great technique, which I did myself in my own study. Um, to make Nate happy uh, and use a golf metaphor, <laughs> be like if one of us teed off for you, but then you took over from the fairway and <laughs> hit, yeah. the, hit the rest to to get the ball in the hole. Um, but I would, I think, and you were getting at this as well. I would highly encourage you to try to tough it out yourself first. And if it means yeah. getting uncomfortable, spending more time and just like throwing some shit at the wall to see what sticks before you open up those videos um like you really didn't know how to make worlds but you know what let me just try it based on variable y and see yep. how that goes that might be super uncomfortable but who gives a shit it's like it's no one's grading review. you it's it's your study it doesn't like, it doesn't yeah. matter um so so do try to do that work yourself first before taking a look at the videos um totally that and like other, like eric yeah. sorry what like what sports or or like activities in your life have you um uh like picked up at some point like what sports or activities uh uh skill running, based type things? running recently um, okay running getting into great. running yeah the first day you started running did you just go out and run a marathon <laughs> right no i i ran i ran probably uh one twenty sixth of a marathon <laughs> right right i used to play soccer and uh and i was like was I good at passing the ball right off the bat? No, I had to get up and like do the, you know, plant your foot, kick the ball, do the things. Everybody who's listening to this right now has done something in their life that they weren't good at when they started. But you had to get up and make mistakes at the flute, at piano, at basketball, shooting a free throw, at golf swings, putting, whatever. Again, to make Nate happy. Um, uh, you have to try it and you're going to shank some shots in order to get better. You have to be willing to, to try it or you're never going to learn how to do them in the first place. Yeah, for sure. And then circling back around to the thing that you had discussed, how to review a game that you actually felt like you did really well on. Uh, another thing I would say is, hey, even if you feel like you crushed a game, but before you started building worlds based on variable y which pops up in rules one and two you had the idea of well variable n would have been you know split two worlds it's either first or last i considered that but i didn't end up picking it but i'd kind of like to know how worlds might have panned out if i 
started down that route. So totally. try it, see how it works. And what's beautiful is that you might discover very quickly that it's a terrible option, that it just is not an efficient way of, of going at the games. So you can abandon it pretty quickly. Just like start it, you might see very quickly that your alternate route wasn't as good. So then, okay, you built the first two worlds and uh, you know what? Actually, yeah, I can see now, not good. So I'm going to leave it. That takes two minutes to make that right. discovery. Um, but what discovery like, do you make broader than that, Eric? You uh, hopefully, if you are paying attention and really thinking about things, figure out why it is that that was not a good route. Um, right. What it was about that variable n first and last that didn't restrict your worlds in a way that like cascaded into further effects in the other worlds. And you're going to notice that pattern in later games. And that's so priceless. Like that right there is the money. It's not just about doing. So for anyone who's concerned about getting to the fourth game, the question isn't timing. It's not, oh, I didn't have enough time to get to that last game. So I got to rush through the first three. That's not the solution. The solution is, is that you you not only did the first three games correctly, but you did them correctly so well, so efficiently, such a straight line between point A and point B that there's like no wasted fat on your solution, so to speak. You have the leanest hamburger of a game setup ever. That's how you get to that game four. You so thoroughly crushed game one, two, and three without rushing, just working diligently. You were just like, I made this decision and it paid off every single step. The only way that you get to that is by doing exactly what we're talking about, exploring, hey, I did this well. Could I have done it even better? I did this correctly. Could I have done it more efficiently? I made 10 worlds. Did I need to? Could I have done it in six by choosing a different rule or variable to start with? That would have helped me. Maybe yes, maybe no. Both of those answers might come up, but it's about the exploration of that. That's really where the, the money and the growth, or the, like the, the growth value comes from the review. Excellent. I think that about covers it. Anything else that you want to touch on, Matt? Logic games are awesome. God, they Demon really for are, life. though. <laughs> yes they're, fu they're fun i've been I, doing i've been doing them for well not as long as you have but several years at this point and i still find them entertaining like it's christmas i i remember when we got uh test i think 92 91 92 93 in the demon that was when i was in the middle of 2l i think like in near midterms and stuff and I literally just set my law books aside for like two hours and just did all of the new logic games because they were that fun. So I hope you get to that place. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do you have a favorite? Uh, well, as long as we're distracting ourselves with our love of the games, do you have a favorite game or a couple Ooh. of favorite games that pop out? In um, mind? I love the dinosaur game. The Mo mm -hmm. the Mav Tyrannosaur game uh, is is one of my favorite games in the Demon or in the LSAT, mainly because it's on so many people's top 10 list of most difficult games. And I can do that game in about five or six minutes while teaching it at this point because it's just so thoroughly destroyable. I love that game. And um, just because it's fun and weird and interesting, I love the clan harvest game too. Mm -hmm. um, the one because it's all fungible and like yep. who cares what goes, but it's such a cool like math. Uh, uh, it, it does not require any math at all, but there's like mathematical things going on in the background Yes, because it's like a, a, a random selection process. And I just love that game for how it plays out, how neat and tidy it is. So those are probably my two favorites of all time. What about you, Eric? Nice. What are your favorites? You know, the Ski Chalet game yes. pops out just because uh, and so many of those early test games, they're just different. Um, yep. But the the ones that require maybe some mapping uh, or which lend themselves to actual physical mapping. So the Ski Chalet game is fun. Um, and what I especially love about that game is that it looks extremely different world building works exactly the same. The process exactly. of building worlds and figuring it out is the same. Yep. So it's a really yep. useful teaching tool because it shows how the process of building worlds 
is identical whether you're using circle slash or whether you are just putting five things in order into five empty spaces yep. or you're drawing a map of people shoveling <laughs> snow <laughs> tunnels between their different ski chalets um uh, it's a good think, one yeah i'm trying to think what else um oh you know what similarly i really like the the trading buildings game oh which yeah. is also just yep. kind of a different game Mm -hmm. but it all just makes perfect sense and it's it's one where building worlds is feels weird to people but you can still do it and there's also just I, it's one of those games where like when you start thinking about it as something that isn't just a lsat logic game mm -hmm. but think but like apply your own mental framework to it in a, just a sensible way that isn't like you're trying to fit the mold of a logic game, it becomes much easier. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the trading buildings game is also a real fun one. That is a fun one. I love it. I, I love all of them. I can't like even the ones that are frustrating. I love them all, which Indeed. I guess that's that's why we're here. All right. Well, thanks, Matt, uh, for coming on the pod today. And of course, for all that you've done for LSAT Demon students over the years. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.